everybody. I'm Kylan Boomer, sixth grade humanities teacher. Um, I came home from the grocery store with these with an egg carton, and it was such a cool egg carton. I was like, what can I do with it? So I decided to make a mobile out of the egg carton. So what I did was you cut the egg carton into the um, separate cups. You can cut them into any shape you want. I just found the four points to be the easiest for me. Plus they kind of look like origami cranes, so I sort of like that as well. So after cutting them, I used, this one has got watercolors, uh, or you can use markers and crayons. I just used yarn, and I went out in my yard and found some sticks, and then tied, you hook the um, egg cartons, you have to poke a hole in them, and then you have to string them, and then you just tie it onto your stick. So I'm going to try to do one here. It's nice and windy. It's a good way to show how the mobiles are flying around. There you go. You just string it. So if you have little ones at home, somebody would probably need to help poke a hole. I actually used a nail to poke my hole, but um, scissors work as well too. And then you just tie it on. There, I think they're really pretty. There you go. I had a great time making this and I hope you will too. Hey guys, it's Miss Snyder. We want to get you up and moving, so we're going to go on a senses scavenger hunt. Now remember, your five senses are sight, hearing, touch, smell, and taste. If it were me, I would go in the pantry and look for some chocolate. Now you can do whatever is the best for you and your family, so go out on the scavenger hunt and then compare what the bests are for you. Have fun. <laughs> Trinity families. My name is Mrs. Overly and I'm Miss Jones and we want to know what floats your boat? <laughs> can you design a boat that floats and fill it up with cargo? You can use items that you can find around your house like a yogurt container or Tupperware. Place your design in water then add cargo to see if it still floats. Challenge your family members to design their own boat and see who can hold the most cargo. Have, Have a, a great, great time during Family Steam Adventure! Hi everybody, welcome to Steam Adventure! I have a challenge for you. I would like you to make a paper airplane. You go find a design and make the best paper airplane you can and have and try it out. Test it. See how far it goes. See if it goes straight. See if it goes crooked. See if it goes upside down. And have challenges within your family. Everybody in the family make a paper airplane and, and, and have a competition. Who's got the best airplane? Who, whose airplane goes the furthest? Who goes the highest? Who crashes fastest? You can do this and it's going to be fun. Have at it. Hola mis amigos, it's Senora Peralta here. I want to challenge you at home to create something musical from the materials that you have lying around your house. What you need to do is walk around your house, start collecting all kinds of different things, start creating your own musical instrument, and show us, demonstrate how you would use this, and then show us how you can make different sounds with this musical instrument. Maybe you can make some maracas, or maybe you can make something with that plucks with your fingers. I am so interested to see what you can come up with. Adios! Hi friends, this is Miss T, and I am going to be explaining the paper chain challenge. And in this challenge, you will need one piece of paper, and the goal is to see how long you can create a paper chain just using one piece of paper. And before you do the challenge, think, do you want to use short pieces of paper, wide pieces of paper, skinny pieces of paper? The choice is up to you. But be creative, have fun, and can't wait to see those long pieces of paper chains. Hello everyone, this is Dr. Jeff Morrison. Welcome to Family Steam Adventure. I'm going to go over the noodle spaghetti tower for you and it's how high can you make a tower made out of spaghetti noodles. So what you'll need for this is a box of noodles from your pantry, 
an adhesive to connect the noodles together, so masking tape. Um, you can use Play-Doh, you can use marshmallows, or you can use masking tape. So Play-Dohs or marshmallows, I would go with the marshmallows if you had them. And as an extra, extra challenge, you can time yourself to see how long it takes you to build a tower. Um, so the goal for this is to may see how tall you can build the tower. So if you want to go against your family, uh, your parents, you can go and um, start building the spaghetti tower by putting noodles into the Play-Doh or marshmallows. You can use tape, but I would use Play-Doh or marshmallows. And then you're building a tower by cross-sectioning all the way up to see how tall it gets before it falls over. So enjoy this adventure. Um, and I hope that everyone is successful building a tower at least two to three feet tall. Thank you. Hi guys, I'm Mr. Benfield, fifth grade teacher. Uh, and I'm gonna talk to you for about our STEAM challenge, uh, a marble run, okay? Maybe you have played with a marble run, maybe you've seen a marble run. This time, we're gonna be building marble runs out of paper tubes. So whether that is a paper towel, long paper towel paper tube, maybe it's a toilet paper one, maybe it's short, maybe you have some leftover tubes of wrapping paper that are nice and long, okay? So you want to create a marble run. We are suggesting that you find a wall to do it on and use some masking tape. And honestly, painter's tape probably works best because it doesn't stick to the wall uh, in a way that would peel the paint off. We don't want any paint peeled off our walls or any wallpaper peeled off our walls. So maybe some blue painter's tape. Uh, and remember that gravity is gonna be pulling that marble down. So you wanna start you know, as high as you can and somewhere safe that you can get to uh, and just make it go. And so you might have some gaps between Right, so as the marble comes out of one tube, it falls down into another. Um, it's hard to bend those paper tubes, so you probably wouldn't be able to do any type of jump. But uh, you want to make it go and just go down in whatever kind of design you can do with whatever tubes you have. And then at the end, you might want to get a cup or some other type of container for your marble to drop into. Uh, other suggestions for tubes might be oatmeal can, uh, canisters, maybe some Pringles tubes, right? Maybe they have uh, the different circumferences of the tubes would make them travel faster or slower, who knows, right? So um, take pictures, take videos of these marble runs that you're doing and share them with us. We can't wait to see all the good stuff and all the cool ideas you guys come up with. Have a great time. I'm Miss Michelle, and for this Trinity STEAM adventure, you guys are going to be making a toy zip line. All you need is fishing line or yarn to put across uh, two spaces. You need either a cup or a bowl and something to hang that cup or bowl onto your fishing line. Then you can put whatever kind of toy animals you want to put in your zip line. Stuffed animals, action figures, whatever you think weight wise might take it from the top all the way to the bottom without falling off. Let us know how you do. Hi friends, do you have 15 minutes? Can you find 15 of the same things? What we want to do is practice our engineering skills. What is the tallest tower you can build in 15 minutes using 15 of the same thing? It could be post-it notes or index cards. Not my favorite, my Hot Wheels cars. And I set my timer for 15 minutes and I get to work. And then don't forget to measure when you're done. Hey everybody, this is Steve Heimel, your facilities manager. This challenge is engineering a solution. Engineers use their knowledge of science to build things and solve problems or improve a situation. Find something in your home that needs to be improved, that needs to be solved, and see what you can do to come up with that resolution. Get your family involved and have fun. See you guys. It is Miss Griffith here to share with you an extra fun STEAM activity. Did you know that we can make our very own lava lamp with materials you can find in your very own kitchen? I didn't either until today, but we are going to make it. 
We've got three important steps and one extra fun bonus step. So step one, find yourself a plastic or glass container with a lid. Step two, fill that container halfway with water and add a few drops of your very favorite food coloring. Step three, fill it the rest of the way with oil and you have yourself a lava lamp. But we have a very fun and exciting bonus step. And that step is to break apart an Alka-Seltzer tablet, drop a piece in, and see what happens. Get creative, have fun with it, make a few of them, any color you want. And that is how to make your very own lava lamp with materials you have in your very own kitchen. Have fun! Hey Trinity, welcome to Steam Night. I am introducing the Egg Drop Challenge. Now here's the thing, we're gonna see if you can build a vessel to keep an egg from cracking when you drop it. So the challenge is that you can use kind of any materials around the house that you can use so that your, drop, your egg does not drop. So recycled materials, plastic, tape, those kinds of things. Now, I was the third grade egg drop champion when I was in elementary school. So I wonder if you can beat my egg drop challenge. So try this out, post pictures, hashtag Trinity Learns, and let's see if we can do an egg drop challenge together. Thank you. Can you take a picture using forced perspective? You can see me here at the Leaning Tower of Pisa and it looks like I'm holding it up. When I went to the Leaning Tower of Pisa, the whole yard was full of people trying to take a forced perspective picture to look like they were holding it up. Forced perspective is a trick of photography where objects look bigger, smaller, or closer together depending on where they're placed. Tourists in Pisa try to take pictures to look like they're holding up the Leaning Tower. Can you experiment with objects and take a forced perspective picture of your own? Have fun, I can't wait to see. Hey Trinity School, I'm Miss Rebecca, first grade teacher. So, do you think you could make a flying object out of a straw and a piece of paper? Probably not, but guess what, you can. All you need is a straw and a piece of paper. Get a straw and get a piece of paper and make little, tear the piece of paper in strips. And maybe you make one long strip and one short strip. Loop the strips, make one little loop and one big loop. Tape them to either end of the straw and you have like a glider. Now, hmm, I wonder, do you think the straw will go further if it has the big end first or the little end? That's up to you. We can't wait to find out. Good luck, family steam night. What's up everybody, I'm Coach Austin and I'm gonna talk to you about the pick of three never before me challenge. You're probably artistic. You probably have created cool photographs or painted cool paintings of just random things that you decided to place into a scene. But we're gonna dig a little deeper in this challenge and you are really gonna stretch your brain, stretch your creativity to think of the three most random possible things you can think of, put them together in one scene and take a picture of them. So for example, I just have happened to collect three very random things, choosing my shoe, a stack of post-it notes, and a remote. I would be willing to bet that never in your life have you seen a picture of these three items together all in one place. And it's not just about them being together, it's how you compose the items that's really going to make it your own. So I might choose to put the shoe on top of the post-it notes with the remote standing coming out of the shoe. Or maybe not. Maybe the post-it notes will go on top of the shoe and the remote is stacked creating sort of a ramp slash triangle shape. So that's all up to you. Get creative, three random items. Good luck, have fun. Hi friends, 
and parents, this is Miss Ann from Pre-K. Today, we are going to talk about color mixing. This is your challenge. I'd like for you to come up with a lot, several different colors that you can mix out of food coloring. So let's see, food coloring and maybe some water. What colors can you make? Hmm, red and blue make Hmm, purple, maybe? Let's see, most food coloring containers come in four different colors, the primary colors. Do you think you could make some new colors that no one has ever invented before? And then you could even name the colors. It's a real easy challenge, but I know that you can do it. Have a good time, bye-bye. Hi Trinity, it's Miss Spitz here. Do you ever feel like you need a moment to calm yourself down? Well, for this STEAM challenge, we're going to make a mindfulness jar. To make a mindfulness jar, you need to first find a water bottle and empty it out. Then you need to make sure that you have warmed hot water and fill it up about to here. Then you need some glue. Now I always use clear glue or you could use, if you don't have glue, you could also use oil. Um, then you need to add some glitter and with my class I use lots of different colors of glitter because they love different colors. So this year we used purple and blue and gold and green so it's really up to you. We did not add food coloring, but you're more than welcome to squirt a few drops of food coloring in there so it has a different color other than clear. Then you're going to put the top back on and you can shake it. And whenever you need some time to calm down, you can sit there and watch the glitter fall. Hope you have fun making this. Bye. Hi boys and girls, I'm Miss Megan. And I'm Miss Sean. And welcome to Family Steam Adventure Night. Woo woo! All right, today in this activity, we are going to be teaching you how to make a catapult. And what is a catapult? A catapult is a machine that you can use to propel objects into the air. And so we have used popsicle sticks and a bottle cap and just a sticky note crumpled up. But think for a minute. You could use pom-poms, you could use M&Ms, you could use coins, anything that could fit inside this bottle cap you could use to propel your piece of paper or pom-pom across the room. And if you don't have popsicle sticks or rubber bands, you could grab some spoons, some duct tape, some binder clips, be creative, think outside the box. We know y'all can do it and have fun. Hey Trinations, it's Mrs. Steinberg here for another family STEAM adventure. Can you make the tallest tower using only cups? So you can use those nice big plastic cups, the red Solo cups, maybe your parents have seen them before, or anything you have around the house. What you're going to do is you're going to grab a whole bunch of them up and try to build this tallest tower with your family. How tall can your family build? You can work as a team together, or you can make it a challenge and work individually to make your own towers. The tower can only use the cups but you can do it any way you want to. So kind of think about some questions for yourself, like do the cups need to be upside down or right side up? Could you build it in a pyramid? What kind of structure can you make? The tower must be freestanding, no holding, no wedging between tables, no attaching it to the surface. You have to make it as tall as you can without falling over with only the cups. So check it out and see what you can do. Good luck, Trinity. Have fun. Hi, Trinity.
Infinity School. Miss Robin here from the Early Learners. Miss Kate wanted me to chat a little bit about constellation viewers. You know, our early learners learn about light. They understand what artificial light and natural light are all about. So this might be a good activity for early learners to do. Gather tubes and tinfoil together. You can create your own constellation viewer. And what's a constellation? It's a cluster of stars that create an imaginary shape. So you can create your own constellation. I believe you need to punch some holes in the tinfoil and then you can shine your light source, which could be a flashlight, through the tube and it will create your pattern that you've made with the little holes you've punched in the tinfoil on the wall. So you will have created your own constellation. How exciting. Steam night. Have a lot of fun. Hope all is well. Bye guys. Hey Traditions, I hope you're having a great time on this family steam adventure. Alright, for this challenge, I want to ask you a question. Can you save Fred? So who's Fred, you ask? Fred is the gummy worm in the picture here. Alright, so the scenario is that Fred was on a cruise ship and the cruise ship capsized. And now he's on a lifeboat, the cup that's upside down. Oh dear. Now this would not be so bad if only Fred knew how to swim, but he doesn't. Now you can see his life preserver, the gummy lifesaver there under the boat. It's trapped. Fred would feel so much better if he had his life preserver on. So what can you do to help out? Now here are the rules. You can't touch Fred. You can't touch the cup, the life draft and you can't touch his life preserver. What you can touch are paper clips. Now this is definitely a challenge that need to be done with teammates. So put those creative thinking caps on and see if you can save Fred. 